right, lots of movie news this weekend. Here is your Monday movie review. Welcome to another Monday. With everything that was going on this weekend, I'll tell you what wasn't happening. Fifty Shades Freed. Yeah, it won the box office, but I successfully skipped the first and second movies and was more than happy to skip the third. I went for the Clint Eastwood directed based on a true story flick, so without any further ado, here's my take on the 1517 to Paris. Our film begins with our three protagonists. Alex Scarlatos, Anthony Sadler, and Spencer Stone were three best friends who met in junior high. Alec and Anthony were two youths always acting up as the result of bullying. They find a kindred spirit in Anthony who is also acting out dealing with the same problems. We see the three bond in a way that only kids can and spend all their time together. That is of course until life as it has a way of doing gets in the way and the three are forced to go their separate ways. Time passes but the three remain in constant contact. They are now being portrayed by themselves in the film. We see both Alec and Spencer have enlisted in the military like they always wanted. After doing their respective assignments for a while, the three childhood friends plan a European vacation together while Alec and Spencer are on leave. We see them hitting all the popular sites across the continent and having a good time with each other. They decide to finalize their trip by seeing Paris, which is where our heroes were put into their particular situation. Everyone knows the story, but on that particular train, a terrorist attempted to murder as many people as possible, but the three Americans thwarted his plan with the help of some other passengers. We get to see that afternoon play out and learn what ordinary people can do when put in extraordinary situations. So, what to say about this one? First off, Clint Eastwood made a bold marketing choice and cast the actual heroes that thwarted this plot along with some of the real passengers from the train that day. I say bold because throughout the film it is obvious that they are in no way actors. Hearing some of the conversations, you have to imagine Clint Eastwood actually rolling his eyes as he was shooting this. But that's the choice he made and so be it. That being said, the movie centers more around the development of these three friends and what made them the people they were to do the right thing when it was needed. As a result, the movie drags a good bit throughout. We know that the people involved in the incident are the ones in the film, but where casting got really weird was in the childhood scenes involving our three main characters. This is supposed to be a serious film, but everyone cast in the first half are known for comedy. I found that to be a weird choice, but at least we get to see what Urkel is doing now. Anyway, the best way I can put it is that the story is great but the film leaves something to be desired. It follows that pattern recently of making movies about events that happened in the past couple of years. I mean, this incident happened in late 2015. I think we should give the event some time to settle before throwing it up on the big screen. But I do think I finally understand the title. Originally, I thought it was the train number, but the 1517 to Paris just means that's how long the movie actually spends on the terrorist incident. 15 to 17 minutes of the entire movie. This has been your Monday Movie Musing. Tyler, I think I'd save this one for home viewing. There it is. Red box. Yeah, here it comes. All right, Matt. Thanks for that, guys.